Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of LJ Lit Reader. I'm LJ and I'm here to talk about books and my general working week. checking in saying hello and uh, letting you guys know where I'm at I look a bit crappy I've had a busy weekend I came back to Salisbury for a hen do there were a lot of cocktails it got a bit messy I think I did really well considering I didn't know anyone there and there was like 12 people and I went into that situation where I only knew the bride but I'd only met her a few times not loads of times and I was kind of there to represent my husband and it was a bit awkward and I kind of warmed up and got going once I'd had a few cocktails but I don't know about you guys but it can be quite stressful when you're in those kind of situations and you're trying really hard and your social battery in the next day is just like completely popped and fried and that's kind of how I'm feeling two days later that and somehow drinking in your 30s is not the same as when you're in your 20s at all feeling a bit worse for wear at the moment but I look like shit and I just wanted to let you guys know how my reading's going I finished a book today I listened to an audio book um, it was called Lieutenant Hornblower I really love the Hornblower series I've watched them all on TV millions of times so sometimes I like to listen to the books um, I also like Sharp and Last Kingdom by Bernard Cornwell so I like those types of books so I thought I'd listen to a bit of a comfort read on the way to Salisbury and back from Salisbury to Western Supermare and I managed to listen to it on 1.5 speed. I'm kind of getting better at listening to these things on faster speeds now. So um, I've just finished it today. I had like a couple of hours left, but I left Salisbury at three o'clock in the morning this morning and I am completely knackered and I've done a full day at work and it's been a hard day at work too. I've had a banging headache. It's been really stressful and uh, the potty training's kind of regressed a bit so my mum's been getting stressed and I've been getting stressed and there's been poo everywhere and it's just been horrific but yeah finished uh, Lieutenant Hornblower I gave it four stars it was a solid read really good it's one of my favourite adaptations with Owen Grufford that they used to run on ITV love Hornblower so much and it was one of my favourite ones so I really enjoyed that I started Twisted Love by Anna Huang and I am a little bit baffled as to why I picked this up. It was on Audible Plus and I was like, oh, a free book. And it's under a certain amount of hours because I'm trying to read as much as I can for Battleathon because we're in week three and we need to get as many points for House Stars or Stumps as we can. <laughs> so we're, we're stumping along and I'm logging all the books and I'm not leaving any book unturned and I may pull make more videos in the future about this. <laughs> My tree puns are growing, expanding, I'm rooting out all of the puns I can. Anyway, getting my stumps in for how stars battleathon so I'm going to try and read as much as I can this week because it's week three and it's um we're up against House of Thorns so that's going to be fun. I'm reading Twisted Love on on Audible. I'm hoping to get that done at least by Wednesday. 
morning depending on how fast I can listen to it because I found 1.5 speed for this one a little bit more tricky so it's gone down to 1.35 speed so maybe I can might get it once I get it going I don't know. I'm also about 35% through on Wendy Darling and I'm really enjoying that it's quite easy reading and I picked up on my Kindle so yeah, I'm just going to get through that as quickly as I can. I've got a banging headache, so I don't know how much I'm going to be able to read today, but I will um, try and get some more pages in before bedtime. But I just want to check in with you guys, even though I look like poo and I feel like poo, but I just wanted to say hi and that I'm here and I'm making videos and I'm... Oh, I'm so tired. But yeah. Anyway, hope you're all having a lovely Monday night as I am having a wonderful Monday night. I've got a cup of tea, I'm gonna get into bed. Yeah, that's my plan. <laughs> Currently at the park, Lizzie Gardens. It's really beautiful here, very peaceful. I'm currently reading Girl, Goddess, Queen. I'm really enjoying it. I'm still not used to talking to myself. This is really awkward. And I, I don't know about anyone else, but I feel really self-conscious doing shit like this, but it's really beautiful. Anyway. I'm reading Girl, Goddess, Queen by, oh, I can't remember who it's by, but I'll put a picture up on the screen and really enjoying it. It's a retelling of uh, Persephone and Hades, but she seems to be called Core in this instead of Persephone at the moment. I don't know if she's going to change her name later along the lines. It's a very different to a Touch of Darkness series by Scarlett Sinclair, so that's interesting I'm still here for it still really enjoying it i'm also reading remarkably remarkably bright creatures by shelby von van pelt i think her name is again i'll put a picture up and that's really good as well so i'm kind of doing a tandem because i'm reading them both at the same time i seem to be at about the same place for both of them i'm also listening to an audiobook i'm listening to the witcher just sitting in the park now gonna go and have some dinner then i'm gonna drive back to western supermare just been for a hospital appointment and the prognosis is good so i won't need to go back for another few years so that's good uh, another thing not to worry about anyway you guys take care and I'll see you soon. Today I'm going to talk about one, two, one, two, three books. And uh, that's my reading week so far. I read, well, I've listened to two of these. I've listened to Lieutenant Hornblower by C.S. Forrester. I've listened to Twisted Love by Anna Huang and I've read on Kindle Wendy Darling by AC Wise. So they're the books I'm going to be talking about today whilst I'm dressed like this. I may add another one if I finish it before Monday and I get it in this video but at this point I'm doubtful because I'm not quite far enough into my books but let's go from there. Hello future Lorna here, I just wanted to say I know that I am going to talk about Hornblower twice so I'm going to cut the second one 
and I'm going to insert some cutesy footage of Salisbury Cathedral instead. <laughs> so sorry to have repeated myself, I won't um, harp on about Hornblower too much, but I will read the synopsis and then I will show you Salisbury Cathedral and then we'll jump onto the next book. Lieutenant Hornblower by C.S. Forrester in this gripping tale of turmoil and triumph on the high seas, Horatio Hornblower emerges from his apprenticeship as midshipman to face new responsibilities thrust upon him by the fortunes of war between Napoleon and Spain. Enduring near mutiny, bloody hand-to-hand -hand combat with Spanish seamen, deck-splintering sea battles and the violence and horror of life on the fighting ships of the Napoleonic Wars, the young lieutenant distinguishes himself in his first independent command, he also faces an adventure unique in his experience, Maria. Darling by A.C. Wise. Find the second star from the right and fly straight on till morning, all the way to Neverland, a children's paradise with no rules, no adults, only endless adventure and enchanted forests, all led by the charismatic boy who will never grow old. But Wendy Darling grew up and she has a husband and a young daughter called Jane, a life in London. But one night after all these years, Peter Pan returns. Wendy finds him outside her daughter's window looking to claim a new mother for his lost boys. But instead of Wendy, he takes Jane. Now a grown woman, a mother and a patient and a survivor, Wendy must follow Peter back to Neverland to rescue her daughter and finally face the darkness at the heart of the island. So Wendy Darling by A.C. Wise and reminded me quite a lot of Christina Henry type books where you take a classic tale, rework it so it's more dark, a bit gothic, a bit scary. Um, I do think that this was a very dark retelling of Peter Pan. It, it kind of follows the post Peter Pan years and the impact that having Peter Pan in her life had on Wendy. And I do think that it was very well done, quite clever in terms of Yes, in real life, if Wendy had have talked about any of her experiences, she would have been seen as being mad. And it kind of deals with that kind of impact on Wendy. It also then has a plot following Peter taking her daughter and Wendy having to go back to Neverland to get Jane back again. I thought this was, you know, cleverly done. I thought it was a really interesting concept. I really enjoyed the writing style and the format. And I really enjoyed seeing the character development of Wendy and how she navigated her feelings and experiences post Peter Pan. And also how she had experienced it growing up and the impact of being an adult and seeing Neverland again through adult eyes was very interesting. I, I actually quite liked Jane's character. I thought she was magnificent. I thought that her spunkiness, her clear morals, her drive, her independent thought, all very good. She was a really interesting character as well. This is a really dark story. It's not for the faint of heart, I would say. It, it isn't light-hearted, it's not cutesy, it, it's really gritty and it, I, d I don't know, I would still class it as a YA though because it doesn't, it doesn't go too graphically gory or in depth with things, it implies but it doesn't actually show terrible things. I would say it's still firmly in the YA bracket but it, it is gritty and it is dark and it's not happy. I really enjoyed it. I don't really have like tons to say because I think it's quite underrated. I think that the story itself did hold my interest. It got a very solid uh, four star rating from me. So I was really, you know, I've got no complaints about it. I think, you know, sometimes things could have been developed. It could have been longer, could have been more drawn out and I would have enjoyed it, would have read more of it. I really liked what they did with Peter Pan and I really feel like, 
you could have seen more maybe from his perspective would have been interesting to see especially at the end I don't want to ruin the ending for you but it would have been very interesting to see his perspective at the end and what that would mean for him and also what it would mean for the greater world after finding out the dark part of Neverland it would be very interesting to see where that would lead the characters and how that would go forward and I definitely think that this is an author I would want to watch and I'd be interested to see what she did next I think I need to look her up and see if she's got any other books I think I'd read them I think that her writing style is quite quite good yeah she's she's a one to watch one to enjoy and a thumbs up from me on that one the next one is Twisted Love by Anna Huang. He has her heart in ice, but for her he'd burn the world. Alex Volkov is a devil blessed with the face of an angel and cursed with a past he can't escape. Driven by a tragedy that has haunted him for most of his life, his ruthless pursuits for success and vengeance leave him little room for matters of the heart. But when he's forced to look after his best friend's sister, he starts to feel something in his chest. A crack, a melt, a fire that could end his world as he knew it. Ava Chen is a free spirit trapped by nightmares of a childhood she can't remember. But despite her broken past, she's never stopped seeing the beauty in the world, including the heart beneath the icy exterior of a man she shouldn't want. Her brother's best friend, her neighbour, her saviour and her downfall. Theirs is a love that was never supposed to happen, but when it does, it unleashes secrets that could destroy them both and everything they hold dear. So I chose this to listen to on Audible because I wanted an easy listen. Again, for driving, uh, for work, for bombing about. and <laughs> This was definitely an easy listen. I must confess, I did enjoy it. Um, I have rated it three stars, but it's three stars of pure, messy, terrible, cheesy <laughs> rubbish. <laughs> Plot was pretty forgettable, but I mean, the characters were quite cute, I suppose, in some respects. Um, the main female character, I think, was supposed to represent Sunshine, and the main male character was the grumpy character. And it, I think it's a sunshine times grumpy trope that they, they call that. Um, <laughs> it was quite funny to see them fall in love. The main male character is disgustingly controlling and a complete creepy stalker psychopath. Um, so um, I, I did feel for this poor, cute, innocent, young, traumatised girl that she just got swept up in his web of evil masochistic rubbish um but I mean the sex scenes were pretty good and I was quite surprised that someone so you know innocent and um naive and and virginal in lots of ways was so up for such rough graphic sex but hey yo you know I mean, one of the first things he said was about how, you know, if she didn't do such and such a thing or she pushed him a certain way, he would fuck her in every hole until she passed out or something. And I was like, fucking hell, Jesus Christ, man, put yourself together. But I mean, you know, there, there is a plot in there somewhere right in the end, but it's not very plausible. In fact, I found it quite implausible, but I think the only thing I found quite interesting in terms of plot was that Ava's character has a trauma that she's trying to work past. Alex is, you know, a very stereotypical mafia son-esque Batman plot line situation going on there. In fact, I kept thinking, this is like Batman. <laughs> But the main guy is not a hero. He's just the uh, rich, um, uh, the rich multi-millionaire control freak weirdo that Batman should have been, I suppose. Anyway, so yeah, I rated it three stars. I the main male character was a complete stalker weirdo. I think that the fact that he harassed her until she went out with him was a bit weird. But hey ho, 
would I read more of these people? Yeah, probably. I probably would. I probably would read more of this this author. <laughs> Purely just for the lols. <laughs> I am currently reading three books at the moment. I'm currently reading Remarkably Bright Creatures, Girl, Goddess, Queen, and The Last Wish um, Witcher uh, novel. I talked about this earlier when I was recording in the park, so I won't go into too much detail, but I just wanted to say definitely really really enjoying girl goddess queen um i'm hoping to finish that one before the end of the week and remarkably bright creatures is really cutesy and it's giving me warm feelings it kind of feels i'm getting uh frederick backman vibes from the writing style like the char character writing style but i'm really enjoying it and it's not what i thought it was going to be i thought it was going to be a book from the perspective of an octopus but it's only sort of from the perspective of the octopus and I'm not really sure at this point how the octopus ties in with the other characters we're being introduced to but I'm you know I'm all going to find out. I'm really enjoying the Witcher book. I didn't think much of the TV series when my husband's been watching it. I actually thought it was a bit convoluted rubbish to be honest and so I am pleasantly surprised that the book is so good, especially as I think the one I'm listening to is a collection of short stories. I don't think that it's the actual book books. Um, so I'm actually quite intrigued to see what the storyline for it would actually be, because I think that Geralt is a very interesting character and I kind of feel really sorry for him because he just seems to save the day and then everyone hates him. Um, I hope that's not the theme for every single book after this. <laughs> I feel like it might be. Yeah, so listening to the short stories of The Last Wish, enjoying it. I'm about, um, hang on, about 50% through of The Last Wish. I'm about 50% through of Girl, Goddess, Queen. And I'm about 15% through of Remarkably Bright Creatures. So I've never, barely even scratched the surface of that one, but... Yeah, really enjoying all three of them. Hopefully I'll have them finished, you know, soon. Battleathon, we're, you know, marching on. I have decided that I'm going to take part in the Magical Readathon, but I'm still wrapping my head around all the things I need to know. <laughs> and I'm really baffled by it all. So I will probably do another vlog about my magical readathon tbr because i need to work out some of the things i need to do because i've never done any of it so i'm what i'm kind of doing at the moment is shoehorning books that i've already read into the prompts for the way to go down the novice path in order to start the lessons so from what i kind of gather at the moment is that i'm a mind walker and I'm going to school to go and find my calling. And the calling I decided I liked the look of the best was the mind mender, because it kind of called to me because I'm mental. And I just need to work out what I'm gonna read. So I'll do a separate vlog for that because I feel like I'll need to wrap my head around what any of this means and what I'll be doing with that but I am kind of hoping that I'll be joining in on that I hope that I'll find another discord to join because I have really really enjoyed the battleathon discord and I've really enjoyed being part of house of stars and I've really enjoyed the vibes and the team so there's a there's a small group of us who've kind of gone off and done our own thing so I'm kind of hoping that carries on because I've really enjoyed the camaraderie and the teamwork of it all and I'm trying to feel brave enough to share my vlogs, but I'm not that brave because, again, I still feel like a knob every time I get a camera out and I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> so it would be nice to kind of concentrate and not feel like a total loser every time I get this camera out. It, it's one for us to watch. I'm going to carry on every Monday, going to post a new video 
going to do this. If I get more separate things going on, then obviously it might be more than one video a week. But at the moment, we're going to stick to one video a week because I feel like that's achievable goals that I can meet. And I'm enjoying it for me because I get to sit here and put my makeup on and kind of feel like I used to feel. And uh, today's makeup is a bit much, I think. I went, I went a bit all out. I was kind of like, I put little one to bed and then I was like, <laughs> and I think I went a bit too hard on it. So yeah, I'm really enjoying being me at the moment. Medication is working for me. Got a bit ear infection again, so I've got to keep an eye on that. So I've got some drops and I'm gonna put them in and hopefully that will clear it up before it gets too bad. Work is horrific and I've had a really bad week at work this week so I'm hoping next week is a bit better but you know things are the way they are aren't they. It's been one of those days and I felt like I needed to talk to you about it. I have been struggling today. I didn't sleep much and I had what I can only describe as like an anxiety attack so I was out today um so I thought I would talk about what it feels like to have an anxiety attack for me it feels like being shoved in a tube and having the air sucked out and I'm sweating bullet bullets of sweat dripping down I'm the sweatiest person you'll ever meet in your life and I feel small like the world is getting bigger and bigger and I'm getting smaller and smaller and there's nothing I can do about it. He's been very loud today and I'm, I don't know if I've talked about it before but I hear a voice in my head and it's a very nasty voice and he tells me horrible things about myself and about my actions and about how people perceive me on a daily basis and it's hard being in my head is like being in a crowded room more like a restaurant or a cafe there's a lot of noise he's the loudest and he shouts he shouts a lot he wants to be heard and I've spent the last year and a ton of medication making sure that I don't listen to him, I don't listen to the things that he tells me, I don't listen to him when he tells me to swallow bleach, or that everyone hates me, or that I need to hurt myself in order to get through the day. I don't need to punish myself, I can forgive myself, I can forgive myself for being alive and having an experience of life, being content in life doesn't mean I need to punish myself in order to receive that and it's hard because I'm constantly being told that I should be I should be dead and I should be forgotten and that everyone hates me and no one likes me and no one wants to be my friend and no one could ever possibly love me because what is lovable about me but I won't listen to him and that's why I'm talking to you, that's why I'm having this channel, that's why I'm having these conversations so that you know you're not alone and if you're feeling anything like I feel, we can be there together and we can hold each other's hands and we can talk about what we do like. We like reading, we like books, we like fantasy, we like worlds where we don't have to exist in a place where we're being told horrible things awful god awful things all the time and we can tune them out and we can listen to what the books are telling us and the books are happy and they're full of life and they're full of adventure and they're full of hope and they're full of sadness and emotion and grief but everyone gets through it and there's always a message and there's always a lesson to be learned So someone went shopping today in Waterstones and came back with three books. If you don't know, this weekend, the 24th to the 26th is 
double points at Waterstones. So I got five stamps for this. You can't blame a girl for buying more books, can you? Binding 13 and Keeping 13 were highly recommended by Steph Loves on YouTube. So I decided to bite the bullet and go for those. And this one here just intrigues me. So really looking forward to reading those and adding them to my ever expanding TBR. Thank you everyone for watching. I feel really grateful that you've watched it to this point. You know, I'm just thrilled that the amount of people are watching this channel that are. I don't really care about big numbers at this point because I'm just grateful for anyone that gives me the time of day. Thank you so much. And um, if you have watched this, a big thumbs up to you and sending you love and kisses. Hopefully I'll see you again next Monday.